On tonight's edition of the Overtime, who will win the epic annual rivalry football game between Flagstaff and Coconino? Plus, how will NEU women's soccer fare in next week's Big Sky Tournament? And NEU strength is the kicking? All that and more on this edition of the Overtime. Thank you for joining us and welcome to this edition of the Overtime, Northern Arizona's only sports show. I'm your host, Sean Clark, and I am joined by sports reporter Cade Gillis. Cade, you ready to talk some sports? Oh yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it, Sean. All right. Cade, you know what it's time for? What time? The epic crosstown rivalry football matchup between the Flagstaff Eagles and the Coconino Panthers. Cade, what can we expect from this game? Uh, well, well, I'll tell you, Sean, uh, but it's not going to be pretty. It's the final game of the regular season, and Coconino has been virtually unstoppable all year. But last week, they got embarrassed by their first loss of the season, 53-14 to against my alma mater. That's right, the Cactus Cobras here representing all the way up in Flagstaff. And Sean, you know what you want to do right after an embarrassing loss, whether that's in life, football, hey, maybe you're a Miami Dolphins fan, I don't know. But what I do know is that you got to take that frustration out on something and that something is going to be the six and three Flagstaff Eagles and a leading this barrage is going to be this guy right here Zach Bennett if you don't know him look up efficient in the dictionary and you'll get a picture of this guy number 34 just a junior but he plays like a college senior average averaging seven and a half yards per carry and is seventh in the entire state with over 1500 rushing yards the Panthers don't do that much passing, and you don't really have to with a guy like that in the backfield. I'm expecting a big, big win for Coconino tonight, Sean. Cade, I agree. Here's the thing about Coconino. Despite the loss to your alma mater, that's right, Cade, that's right. they are the best team in the Grand Canyon region. Zach Bennett has been incredible. Let me talk about another 34 running back. Flagstaff's own Luis Aramio, who is as good as well with 927 yards and 11 touchdowns. Cade, we know Flex have been talented at six and three, but a tough loss at home versus Mojave has put mm -hmm. some dents in their playoff plans. Cade, you were there. What happened? Uh, I mean, I wish I could tell you, Sean. Uh, it was one of the most bizarre high school games I've seen in my time. What looked to be a surefire blowout over Mojave turned into a contest of between the refs of who could throw their flag the furthest. Three long touchdown runs were taken off the board, which ultimately led Mojave toward a big upset win against the Eagles earlier this season. Yeah, Kate, they lost a 20 to seven lead <laughs> with only f a few minutes to go and lost 21 to 20. Brutal. Brutal. If Flagstaff is going to have any chance, they need to be disciplined and keep the ball away from Coconino's offense for long stretches of time. All right, Cade, you want to jump up to the college ranks? Absolutely. NAU women's soccer is the fifth seed in next week's Big Sky Tournament and will face the fourth seed Northern Colorado Bears in Greeley, Colorado, my home state. Cade, what is the outlook for this match for the NAU Lumberjacks? Well, last year's team was truly special, particularly on the defensive side. They even set a program record after not allowing a goal for 684 consecutive minutes. Funny enough, that's also the amount of time it takes me to get out of bed this morning. But this Jacks team is not the team of last year. This is a different roster with a brand new coaching staff and new expectations. But what better way for first year head coach Kylie, La Kylie Lowe to make her postseason debut than with a victory over Northern Colorado this weekend? a team they've already beaten two to nothing earlier this year. Okay, last year, the Big Sky Tournament, NAU lost to Eastern Washington in brutal fashion, one to nothing in the first round. This year, if NAU is going to change that, they need to deliver on offense. Paige Mailing and Madison Montgomery are the two goal leaders on this team, and it's up to them to deliver NAU into the second round. Cade, NAU football is coming off a thrilling homecoming <laughs> yes, win they over are over Portland State this weekend. And kicker Luis Aguilar drilled a 41-yard field goal with four seconds left. Here is the call by NAU TV's Mitch Stroman, and this was the fifth 
best play of the week in the FCS. With eight seconds left, Aguilar the kick, go baby, go, yes, yes, the game winner perhaps, with four seconds to go, he does it again. Cade, what a clutch kick. Yeah. All right, Cade, you were on the sideline for that game, if I remember correctly. I was, I was. So, so tell me about that whole experience. I mean, yeah, I, I was up close and personal during the game-winning kick on the NAU sideline, and it was electric. I'm talking coaches jumping up and down, players running back and forth, grown men screaming like little kids. I got in the splash zone as players were squirting water bottles all over the field. I'll say... It was without question one of the best moments from NAU football over the last four years since I've been watching them. I also got to speak with the man, the myth, the legend himself, Luis Aguilar. Or should I say, Luis Laguilar. A few weeks ago, after he drilled a 57-yarder against Northern Colorado before the end of the first half, here's what he had to say. Here with NAU kicker Luis Aguilar who just this last week kicked a 57-yard field goal against Northern Colorado. Gave you guys a big momentum boost. Ahead in the FCS, that's, a, that's an all-time high this year, tied the FBS for 57 yards. Did you believe that you were going to make that kick? Yeah, I mean, as a kicker, you, you always want to go out there and believe you're going to make a kick, but um, I just treated it like just another kick. You know, it was a 40-yard or 30-yarder. Could yeah. you have made it from 60-plus? Oh, yeah. I've... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've made it 62 in the dome. Out here, I've hit a lot of 57s, but um, kicking the dome is so much nicer. No wind, um, no no nothing, you know, affecting your kick. You actually told me before this interview that you weren't even 100% and you still made that 57-yard. Can you talk about that real quick? Oh, yeah. Um, well, that week, that game week, um, Tuesday, I, I tweaked my groin. I was off for a, f a couple of days, and then... Friday I kicked a little bit, and then Saturday, the last kick of my pregame warm-up, I tweaked it again, went to the training room, got it worked on, got it wrapped, like twice, like with everything, and got just treated for like 20 minutes straight. So. All right, and last question, do you have a nickname on the team? <laughs> and uh, if not, can I offer some nicknames for you? Well, the closest nickname is Louie Lumberjack. You know, that's, I mean, that's what they call me. They call me that, just kicker. So. That, 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 that's too weak here. I got a few of you that I could throw out here, and hopefully it'll stick here. Okay. How about Luis the Beast? Do you like that one? I do. You I like do, that one? I do, but uh, maybe Beast as a kicker. All right, I got a couple more nicknames for you I got to throw out there. How about Luis Legular? You like that one? <laughs> I've never heard of that one. <laughs> it could be. It could work. You got, you got to tell a couple of my teammates they can start it, you know. That, that's who I'm going to send this out to. And lastly, how about the – you are from Nogales, correct? Yes, sir. And I want to remember the nickname because I don't want to mess this up. <laughs> ah, yes, the baddest from Nogales. How about that Who's one? That? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like that one. Is, is, uh, that, is that your top one right there? Um, yes, and then the beast one is the next one. All right, you hear that? We got the beast here. Luis Aguilar, thank you so much for joining me. Have thank a good you. one, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thanks, Kate. NAU football is now 4-0 and at home, but 0-4 on the road. NAU is on the road this week in Eastern Washington. This is unfortunate news for quarterback Case Cookus because the last two times he's played Eastern Washington, he broke his collarbone against them. NAU needs to step up their pass rush, their rush defense against the Eagles if they're going to give the offense plenty of chances to unleash their explosive attack. Coming up, Sports reporter Nadia Mehta caught up with NEU college basketball players Cameron Shelton and Bernie Andre. Check it out after the break.